Bars, yes, bars are cookies, right? Well, they're not, but it's the same thing. Let's just, okay. Hello, I'm Claire Saffitz. Today I'm making minty lime bars. This is a dessert for true citrus lovers. And it's a bar, not a cookie, but to me, it really belongs on sort of the holiday cookie spread. So there's something that's like very wintertime about this, but also really cheering in its tangy butteriness. I feel like lime is kind of an underrepresented flavor in desserts. You have key lime pie and then that's kind of it. So I love celebrating limes in this recipe and using it as a swap for lemons. And then you have a little bit of fresh mint in this shortbread crust to kind of brighten it up. And it's sort of an unexpected and light wintertime treat. Well, it's like really not that light because like, there's a lot of butter in it, but you get what I mean. You get what I mean. <laughs> So making this is a two-phase process. First we make this shortbread crust and we bake that. Then I make this lime curd filling and that pours on top and then we bake it again. So it's a really easy process. No mixer required. You'll just need a saucepan and a whisk. So I make this recipe in an eight by eight pan. I highly recommend that you use a metal pan for baking. It's very common for people to have a, like a glass Pyrex eight by eight or nine by 13, but it's not great for something like making lime bars or lemon bars because what happens is glass retains heat for a long time and metal heats up and cools down more quickly. You're just more likely not only to have even cooking but not to overshoot the mark. So I like to train the foil into the shape of the pan before I press it in and that helps to prevent like little tears in the foil where the filling might seep through. So I just mold it on the outside of the pan like this. All right, so now I have this, the foil already in the shape of the pan and you can press it in. Really take the time to smooth it into all the corners. It's like wrapping a present <laughs> from the inside. And you wanna have a little overhang because the foil is gonna help us lift the bars out of the pan to slice them. So I'm gonna brush a thin layer of butter across the bottom of the foil and up the sides. I tend to use whatever fat is in the recipe as the greasing agent for the pan, but if you wanna just spray this with a little like, you know, non-stick cooking spray, that's fine too. The next thing I'm gonna do is zest my limes. And this is gonna go in my shortbread. And you only want the green part. So once you start to hit this white pith, that part's bitter. Keep the fruit moving. The zest has all of these flavorful oils in it. I like adding it to the shortbread. It's like this is really all about the lime. To release all of the flavors from the zest, I'm gonna add a quarter cup of granulated sugar. And now this is a step where I massage the zest into the sugar. Like the sugar is crystals with these sharp edges and it's cutting into the little shreds of lime zest and releasing all of these oils and flavors. So this is a basic shortbread. It is essentially sugar, flour, butter, always in every baking recipe a pinch of salt. You know, when you have crust that you're pressing in, it, the pressing kind of compacts it and makes it dense. And so the little bit of baking powder is there to create a little bit of puffing in the oven for the crust and it lightens it. So I'm always trying to find ways in baking to add fresh ingredients, produce, herbs, and of course the mixture of mint and lime is kind of classic. How often are you seeing fresh mint in a holiday cookie? Not very often. So I have one stick of unsalted butter that I cubed into like half inch pieces, and this is cold. Now we are going to smash the butter into the flour mixture. Not like pie dough, it's that like we want to go further. We basically want the butter to disappear and to completely work into the dry mix. It helps to toss all the little pieces to coat them in the dry. Once they're separated like that, you can start to smash. I strongly believe that if you can do something by hand, you should. Because I think when people see mixer, they think, okay, I don't have a mixer, I can't make this. But I want people to know that the default is kind of you can make it by hand. I love seeing all the flecks of green. And I have what I would call like moist crumbs. So I don't have any floury bits anymore. And I don't have any discrete pieces of butter. It's all been worked in. So now I'm ready to press it into the pan. So what you want to do is just transfer the whole mixture into your pan. And then before I start pressing, I sort of scatter them around and get the crumbs in an even layer. Now I'm just gonna go in with a flat palm and really smooth it out. So if you see a big piece of butter, you can kind of just smear it in. Like there, I have one. Just kind of give it a little smear. Okay, that looks great. Now this goes into a 350 oven and you wanna bake it until the very edges are golden brown and you have a nice golden color across the entire surface. While our shortbread crust is baking, I'm gonna move on to the lime curd. You always wanna work with fresh citrus juice. You need three quarters of a cup of lime juice. Make sure you don't have any cuts on your, fan, your hands when you do this, because that will sting. 
All right, I'm still here juicing lives. <laughs> still juicing. <laughs> I did, I'm on one, two, three, four, five, on my sixth lime. All right, so now I'm actually adding lemon juice to my curd because limes have a very particular flavor, but I want the kind of like piercing acid of lemon. This is still very much a lime bar, but with any kind of curd, I always add lemon. The acid is important in the setting of the curd. I'm gonna just combine that with my lime juice. Did I just dump in all the seeds? Yeah, yeah. I'll edit that out, I'm sure. No, I'm sure it'll be in there, okay. And I often do a combination of whole eggs and yolks in curd. Typically you see just yolks, so that makes a very, very rich, silky curd. But the addition of one white in the whole egg also kind of lightens it and makes the whole thing a little bit, just kind of rounds it out. So I'm gonna combine my yolks and my egg. Then in the saucepan, I'm combining the cornstarch with half of the sugar. So this is one cup total. It might seem like a lot, but we also have an entire cup of citrus juice. And the filling itself is very tart. I wanna make that clear. It might be a shock to some people who are used to like a really sweet lemon bar. This is sour. If you don't like sour, I don't know. Add more sugar or, don't, or make something else, I don't know. I added a pinch of salt. And now I'm gonna add my one cup total of citrus juice. That was a quarter cup lemon juice and three quarters of a cup lime. I'm gonna turn this on to medium heat and bring it to a boil. And that is because for cornstarch to activate, it needs to be boiled so that we get all of the thickening power of it. And while that is starting to bubble, I'm going to do it the next step, which is called blanching the eggs. It comes from the French term blanchir, which is like to lighten, like to bleach or lighten. So. We're whisking together the eggs and the sugar until the mixture looks kind of pale. So here you can see I have this really smooth, sort of thickened mixture, and it has lightened in color a bit, and then you temper the eggs. So you are taking the hot liquid, and pouring it slowly into the eggs. If I were to just pour the eggs into my saucepan with this now boiling liquid, we would immediately cook them. You would have like weird, sweet citrus egg drop soup. So here I'm gonna slowly stream in my hot citrus mixture about a tablespoon at a time. And I don't need to add all of it. I'm gonna leave half of it in the saucepan. And now this whole mixture goes back into my saucepan. Also, this is off the heat. Anytime you have curd on the heat, you wanna be whisking it constantly. After you've added the eggs, you don't wanna bring it to a boil because then you'll end up overcooking the eggs. I can already see this is starting to thicken. The foam is subsiding. I'll have a very opaque mixture. And mostly I can tell because it's just more viscous and it's starting to hold the marks of the whisk. I think this is done. If you take a wooden spoon and you dip it in the curd, first of all, you can see it's really clinging to it. And then when you run your finger through, you get that super clean line. So you know it's done. There's my timer. All right, this looks good to me. I'm gonna pull it out. Oh, this is very important. I'm going to turn down the oven to 300. I cannot tell you how easy it is in a recipe to miss the little line that says turn the oven down. So I'll put my crust right there. It has this really even golden color across the surface. So that looks good to me. So I'm finishing my curd. I have my cold cubed butter here. I'm gonna add it one tablespoon at a time. It's gonna thicken it, enrich it, give it great flavor. These look like lemon bars because they're not green because lime juice isn't really green. So just keep that in mind, I guess. if. Technically, you wanted to add one drop of blue food coloring to turn this green. I wouldn't have anything to say about that. I let the crust cool for a few minutes. It's not piping hot. You can see that like the curd has formed this kind of like luxurious, smooth texture. And this is gonna bake until I see the filling. It'll be slightly browned around the edge and maybe bubbling in the corners. So because of the eggs in there, it is puffed. You can see it is set, but when I do that, the whole thing, there's like a little bit of a jiggle. And that's what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna let these cool at room temp uncovered um, until they're warm but not hot. And then I'm gonna stick them in the fridge. So this is something that you wanna cut cold. And then actually I baked off a version last night and now it's completely solid. So I'm gonna use the foil to lift it out. Carefully peel away the foil from the sides. So once you have the foil flattened, just take your spatula and run it underneath the shortbread crust. So once you get a little bit underneath, you can just kind of peel the whole thing off. Cutting these cold will give you like a super sharp, defined edge to the bars, which I really like. So I'm gonna cut them into 16, so a four by four grid. 
If you want to have a kitchen towel um, dipped in some warm water for cleaning off the knife every time, that's how you get those super sharp, defined cuts. Before we serve, I'm gonna put the finishing touches on, which is a dusting of powdered sugar, and I like a generous amount. The finishing touch is just some fresh lime zest, and you wanna grate this over just right on top. So yeah, it's flavor, but it's also, you want people to know this is lime. And now these are definitely ready to eat because the filling has kind of hydrated and started to dissolve the powdered sugar, so I wanna enjoy these sooner rather than later. I like the proportions of crust to filling. It's like two parts crust to three parts filling, which I think is the right amount. And taste. Mm. So tart. A little puckering. That's how I prefer my citrus desserts. I wanna like have that kind of little pucker. Great flavor. The shortbread is so crisp, but it's tender. Because we have that little baking powder in there, it's easy to bite through. Mm. Very, very bright lime flavor. Very good. Citrus is just a really wonderful bright spot in winter time when there's not a whole lot else fresh at the market. I think it's a wonderful complement to the sort of more traditionally heavy, chocolatey kinds of things on the holiday dessert table. So I hope you give it a try. It's really delicious, citrusy, bright, cheerful, um, and I hope you make it for the holidays. So thanks for watching.